Hello everybody on YouTube, Sonic Waffles here, and today I have a very special video for you. Uh, sorry about no Call of Duty commentary today, or Minecraft commentary uh, on Sonic's Sojourn, but unfortunately, I do have to sh well actually fortunately, I love you guys, uh, just because I've seen some pretty cool stuff over on the forum, but the people at the Minecraft forum are demanding, actually no one's demanding anything, uh, I pretty much suck at it, so, but... I am going to show them some love and show them a very cool device that they can use in the redstone creations. So, let me show you what it does. It is a single input, four-way selector switch. Which I guess is a good way to put it, but essentially you get one input that you can press and it will alternate between four outputs. And this is the entire device. Pretty amazing that it's so freaking big. And unfortunately, that's his, that was the first design, and uh, which is actually pretty bad. Um, but he uses this main component, which is a sand cycler. And as you can see, it uses inert blocks and blocks that will transmit redstone signal. And it basically rotates it around, alternating them uh, to send different outputs, different locations, and et cetera, et cetera. And this is how it works. Uh, essentially, you have to detect... Uh, because if you press all of these pistons together at once, you will end up breaking the device because you have five blocks to be pushed and only four pistons. So you will actually put a sand block right there. If see if I powered it all right now, you'd have a sand block right there at the end of it, and you'd have a glass block right here, which will have pushed this redstone away. So you'll have to fix it. But I uh, I do have a system that detects this, which is this right here. It detects which output is outputting. And as you can see, this one's outputting, so this will be inverted down here. And after it's inverted, it will power this piston, which this is directly off the input, which comes around through this line into this USB. Um, or essentially, that's what it is. Okay, sorry about that. I had to take care of my dog. Um, but as you can see, it's essentially a USB, and the only the ones that have an output, which is only one at a time, uh, we'll have a piston sticking up and that's how we detect whether or not uh, this piston or this piston or that piston or that one gets activated and that's very important because we don't want to break the sand cycle we want it to work uh, now let's just take a look at a few of the properties of this if you press it right after the button comes out which means like an instant press as you can see it is protected well uh, it does not flood does not break um, just because this is actually a very a decently fast system it could be rewired uh, to work with this piston system so you have a much faster uh, time be between button and output but uh, this actually is is probably the best way and the uh, most fail safe way because this one over here is actually the exact same thing but I would advise you using this one uh, just because I guess it would be a little bit more easy to to stick into a game. It's and essentially it's the input uh, for you know whether or not you want one to four players or five to twenty points or you know easy medium master ultra master or whatever difficulty, uh, which is very useful because I've played a few Redstone games and the difficulty is pretty much displayed by uh, by four buttons and you press whichever one you want uh, basically works just like a chain of memory cells um, which I guess would would work but this is a little bit more cool so maybe you want to implement this and as you can see it's got four simple outputs which are color-coded and the way this works is instead of detecting the output at the output which as you can see that's how we're doing it here we're using this stack of torches to invert invert and invert and as you can see, it will uh, it will trans transmit that signal uh, at the output. Now, as you can see here, there's the output, and this is the detection system. This torch right here, this is what detects whether or not there is a sand block there or not. Um, so, what this does is this keeps the torch under this piston powered constantly, unless there is a signal being transmitted. And as you can see by the screen one. There's a signal being transmitted, which means this torch is off. People be walking upstairs. Jeez, ruining my videos. Um, but as you can see, this torch is off. So if that torch is off, that means whenever this torch flickers, 
it will unpower that torch, which will become powered and power this piston, pushing the sand block out of the way and to a different output. Now, the way this works is power is being sent to all pistons every time. However, even if this one flickers, this one's still going to make up for it because it's being constantly powered. Now, you will notice that these del these have certain delays on them because uh, if, uh, if I break the machine real quick, which means if I do this and replace these and replace them with a one tick uh, repeater, which is what I used before, you'll see the problem sometimes if you press the button too fast, you'll get, uh, I, I don't know what to call it, but it's basically like rollover. Um, now you might be wondering why this input does not work as fast as the other one, uh, because this is a transformer right here, transforms the uh, 10 tick pulse to a five tick pulse. Yes, five ticks. And it transforms it into a five tick pulse, which is the best pulse for this device. And you can't actually um, spam the input because you have to wait till that transformer clears. And then once it's cleared, you can pulse again. Uh, which is actually, I guess, is a good thing, so you can't just spam input. But as you can see, the problem would be if I could get it to happen. I don't think I would be able to get it to happen. But essentially what was happening is you'd have rollover where you'd press a button, and it would just roll over an output. Uh, so it would go from 2 to 3 to 4 in one, one press of a button uh, instead of going from 2 to 3. And that was a problem. So we have to make sure that these are set on two, otherwise the device will not work. But you don't have to worry about that. You can take a closer look by clicking the link in the description. It is a download to this world. I think I'll put a, a mega upload link, definitely. Um, so you can definitely download this map, see it for yourself. Actually, it won't be the entire map. It'll just be a little cutaway. But uh, this is simple enough for you to understand. And hopefully, you'll be able to use it in some redstone devices. Uh, so. If I may ask, if you do use this in your videos or in your, your Redstone creations, please just uh, send the Redstone creation to me and tell me where you used it, perhaps in your input. That's probably the, uh, the only place that you'll use it, but I think this might help you out in creating some pretty little Redstone games. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.